Hello everyone, welcome to lecture 15 of the course Applied Seismology for Engineers. Myself Dr. Abhishek Kumar. In lecture 14, we had discussed about one dimensional equation of motion for primary waves. In earlier discussions, we have seen that the occurrence of earthquake will result in release of different kind of waves. These waves during the propagation starting from the focus as these are propagating away from the focus and interacting with the propagation medium that is the crystal medium depending upon the heterogeneity depends upon uh, unconformity which are present in the medium the waves will interact with this particular medium and subsequently once these wave reach to a particular recording station depending upon the frequency content amplitude and duration of these waves these will be detected and recorded by a recording station. So, in today's class that is lecture 15, we will be discussing about how the propagation of shear wave through a particular medium will be governed by an equation that is called as one dimensional wave equation for shear waves. Before going to the equation for one dimensional equation of motion for shear waves, we will be discussing again about what is the basic characteristics of shear waves and how these are relevant as far as the earthquake induced vibrations and sometimes the effect of earthquakes are also visible on the ground surface. As I mentioned in lecture 14 also, it is not directly the earthquake which is responsible for loss of lives or damage to building and other infrastructure. It is basically the response of the building to the vibration which are being transferred through different waves. So, if the buildings are designed properly such that the external loading because of seismic vibrations induced in the building, if the building is able to take up that particular load, the building will remain safe. Otherwise, the building can show minor cracks, moderate cracks and complete collapse. It is applicable to other kind of infrastructure also like dams, bridges, even embankments also, slopes, everywhere it is basically how the system is going to respond when it is subjected to seismic loading. When we, base, when we say seismic loading, that means some waves which at that particular site, whether it is a slope, whether it is a dam, whether it is a bridge or any building, at that particular site, because of some earthquake which has happened maybe 50, 100, 150 kilometer away from your site what is the characteristics of vibration which has been transferred to that particular building that will define what is the vibration or external loading which is now available at the foundation level or to the superstructure corresponding to which the system has to offer resistance such that it should not undergo collapse or minor cracks or moderate cracks. And subsequently depending upon the response, it will also define the safety of its intended user and which we always see in terms of fatalities, casualties. So, this is the complete picture of damage starting from the loading of or the vibration which is being generated from the part of the earthquake. So, uh, this is again the summary of whatever I have just told. It is not the earthquake which is directly causing the uh, building damage as well as the casualties rather it is otherwise it is the loading is there depending upon the loading if you have designed the building properly if you have designed your other infrastructure properly that will define the or ensure the safety of that particular infrastructure and secondly it will also ensure the safety of its intended users. So, shear waves also known as secondary waves because these are the one which appear or which are detected by a recording station after primary wave. So, if I have a recording station located at some epicentral distance away from your potential region of earthquake occurrence, if that particular fault shows some signature of earthquake, vibration will be released from that particular focus and will be propagating in the three dimensional space. Now, depending upon the vibration which are propagating along the direction of recording stations, will be getting detected at the recording station. Once you start analyzing the ground vibration, you can actually see what is the frequency content. Even you can differentiate between 
what is the content which is dominated by primary wave, secondary wave and subsequently other content of the motions. This is very important because you have to have an understanding about how much time required for shear wave to reach a particular recording station, primary wave to reach a recording station. In lecture 14 also I told whenever it comes to primary wave arrival time, it is very important as far as development of early warning systems such that once you are able to detect some primary wave has been detected at the recording station, you can, you can check and compare with some threshold value which is again de determined by the designer and then you can decide whether and there is a need to issue a warning or not. Secondary wave as the name suggests, these are also called as shear waves. So, whenever these waves are passing through a particular medium, the medium undergoes shearing. So, whenever we see most of the time damages mostly will be confined to shear failures, confinement of reinforcement and even in terms of ground many a times liquefaction is also occurred which is again primarily because of loading or the vibration which is produced by the seismic waves. So, shear waves are also called as transverse waves because whenever the shear wave is passing through a particular medium it is going to induce vibration in transverse direction. So, if this is the direction in which the wave is propagating, it is going to cause particle motion in perpendicular to the direction of wave propagation. So, one perpendicular direction is in vertical direction as you can see on your screen and other direction is still perpendicular to the direction of wave propagation, but you can see it is parallel to your line of sight when you are looking at the screen. So, two directions in which the particle possibly can undergo shearing when a shear wave is incident on a particular medium. That means, in vertical direction that will be perpendicular to your direction of wave propagation and other perpendicular direction is in the line of sight when you are looking at the screen or if you see in front this is the direction in which the, the shear wave or the particle will undergo movement when the shear wave is passing in the parallel to the line of sight. So, this propagation of shear wave through a particular medium cause shear deformation. Shear deformation because all the deformations are happening perpendicular to the direction of wave propagation. So, wave propagation is happening in a particular medium as a result of a shearing in the medium is happening in perpendicular direction. These arrive second at a recording station for that reason we call it as secondary waves also usually the velocity propagation velocity of shear wave is lower than primary wave velocity. Primary wave we have discussed in primary wave the particle will oscillate or there will be to and fro motion in the particle in the direction of wave propagation. In case of shear wave it is in perpendicular direction with respect to the direction of wave propagation. Again very much similar to primary wave once the material is subjected to loading, it will undergo shearing in horizontal as well as vertical direction, but once the wave propagates further, the material will come back to its original position. So, shear wave these can travel through solids because solid offer stiffness against which the material can offer resistance and the particle motion is also possible in perpendicular direction with respect to the wave propagation. However, whenever it comes to liquid or gases, usually these do not offer resistance, stiffness or shear modulus. As a result of which whenever there is an incident shear wave on liquid or gas, the wave will not propagate further, because the medium is not there for wave through which it can actually propagate. Approximately shear waves travel at 3 to 4 kilometer per second in earth's crust and almost 4 to 4.5 kilometer per second in mantle. So, if you compare the propagation velocity of primary wave and shear wave, you can see though it is lesser than primary wave velocity, but still shear waves are propagating quite fast in the propagation medium. This can also be correlated with respect to the fact that whenever there is an earthquake may be 100 kilometer, 150 kilometer away from your site suppose you are you are sitting at one particular location and then there was an earthquake maybe 100 kilometer 150 kilometer away from your site where you are sitting 
after couple of seconds depending upon the epicentral distance you may also experience some kind of vibration in the ground because the waves are propagating at that much particular high velocity. So, particle oscillation happens perpendicular to the direction of wave propagation. Depending upon the direction in which the particles are undergoing motion, the shear waves can further be classified as S v as well as S h. So, S v is component of shearing which is happening in vertical direction and S h is the component leading to shearing of material in horizontal direction. So, both S v and S h are perpendicular to the direction of wave propagation. S v will cause upward and downward movement in the particle at the time the wave is propagating through a particular medium. S h will be left and right direction. So, in order to demonstrate the potential movement which can happen in an element when the secondary wave or the shear wave or transverse wave is passing through a medium. Here you can see an animation. So, this is a shear wave which is passing through a particular medium. So, this is an elementary rod through which the shear wave is passing. You can take any medium through which shear wave is passing and this is the direction in which the shear wave is propagating. Direction of S wave propagation. So, when the waves are propagating in this particular direction, you can see there is particle motion any particular cross section you take along the length of this particular rod. The particles which are shown by these circles, you can see at any cross section along the length of the rod, the particle is undergoing vertical motion or there will be. So, you can see on that particular section or in this particular section at the interface between two particles which are adjacent to each other in horizontal direction there is pure shearing which is happening in vertical direction. This is you can see this is the demonstration of S v component. Similar way the particle at the same time are also undergoing shearing in horizontal direction which is shown over here. So, here again you can see the direction of wave propagation is. So, you can see here the this is the rod elementary rod which is shown in this particular figure. So, this is the elementary rod along which the shear wave is propagating and then as a result of this propagation S h component which is shown over here that means, in horizontal direction there is shearing happening. You can see also over here there is two flow motion in left and right direction and then at the same time vertical motion is also happening over here which is shown in the other animation. Now, collectively when this shear wave is passing through a particular medium, you will see the particle at the same time is undergoing horizontal as well as vertical shearing. As a result, this, this information we will use when we start deriving the one dimensional equation of motion for shear waves. So, let us discuss about uh, the one dimensional wave equation for shear wave, but keep in mind that the particle is undergoing rotation. So, if you say one particle right now I have shown over here two particles, but this shearing in horizontal as well as vertical direction it is happening simultaneously in each particle or the force is uh, the shear force is applicable in both the direction. As a result you see one particle which is moving in this direction also and in the di this direction also. So, collectively you can see the particle is undergoing or the cross section in which the particles are located it is basically undergoing some kind of rotation. So, that is that is another reason why which many a times when we discuss about one dimensional equation of motion for shear wave will take into account as though rather than axial forces which were applicable for primary wave in this particular case for shear wave the cross section of the rod is actually experiencing torque. So, it is like the particle is undergoing motion here also and here also simultaneously horizontal as well as vertical as a result of which you are considering it is undergoing torque. So, using this information we will be deriving the one dimensional equation of motion for shear wave. 
So, let us discuss about one dimensional equation of motion for shear wave or you can write it also as S wave, because shear wave we, we often refer to as S wave also. So, these will be coming if you take a recording station, you will have firstly the component from P wave, second you will have component from S wave. So, before you, you start, uh, okay. one dimensional equation of motion for shear wave passing through an infinite medium. through an infinite medium. Now, in this particular case, we have to take into consideration what is the nature of motion which a particle is undergoing when the wave is propagating through the rod or through the medium. Now, whenever I say about medium, basically I am trying to represent the medium which the wave is experiencing or the wave is finding in order to propagate between the focus of an earthquake and be before it is reaching to a recording station. So, any medium through which the wave is propagating between the source and the site that is called as a medium. So, whenever I am taking about shear wave or primary wave and mentioning about the medium. So, I am basically mentioning about the medium through which the wave is propagating. You can call between the source and the site or again between the bedrock and the surface. So, every time and any medium through which the wave is propagating you call that as the medium of propagation or the propagation medium. So, as mentioned earlier as mentioned earlier that the passage of shear wave through a medium cause particle motion in horizontal as well as vertical direction simultaneously as a result as a result the particle experiences motion upward downward as well as up and down. this nature of horizontal and vertical movement of particle, particle means the particles which are available in the propagation field vertical movement of the particle can be considered as as application of torque of torque about the axis of about the axis of propagation medium 
or you can call it as along the direction of wave propagation. So, if you consider an elementary rod, the direction in which the wave is propagating will be superimposed with respect to or will be coinciding with respect to the axis of the rod. So, along the direction of S wave propagation. For this reason, propagation of or the determination of of S wave in a medium is approximated to application of torque now when torque is applied to a medium there will be in case of primary wave there was particle oscillation or the particle displacement u value which was taken in the direction of wave propagation now here because the cross section is subjected to torque there will be particle motion but that will be angular displacement that we will discuss application of torque in the direction perpendicular to in the direction perpendicular to to the wave propagation wave propagation. With this information, with this information, the derivation of one dimensional equation of motion for shear wave will be derived. So, that means considering the nature of particle motions happening in horizontal direction and vertical direction simultaneously that is approximated with respect to the torque. So, now when we are interested to develop the one dimensional equation of motion for shear wave, we will take into account that there is a medium through which the wave is propagating and this particular medium is subjected to torque which is approximated to the nature of movement in the particle when the shear wave is passing through the same medium. So, let us discuss about it. Consider, consider a cylindrical rod, rod of length L as the propagation medium or as the medium of propagation as the medium of propagation as shown in figure shown in figure. So, you can consider a particular rod of length L through which the shear wave is propagating. Again as I mentioned earlier also to understand the nature of 
पार्टिकल मोशन टू अंडरस्टैंड द नेचर ऑफ पार्टिकल मोशन वी विल कंसिडर एन एलिमेंट्री रॉड एन एलिमेंट्री पोर्शन पोर्शन ऑफ अब रॉड विल बी टारगेटेड टारगेटेड मीन्स वी विल बी इंटरेस्टेड टू नो वॉट विल हैपन इफ देर इज एन एलिमेंट्री रॉड सो कंसिडर दैट एलिमेंट्री रॉड टू बी एग्जिस्टिंग बिटवीन वन वन एंड टू टू सो देर वॉज मीडियम विच वॉज बेसिकली द एंटायर मीडियम थ्रू विच द वेब इज प्रोपोगेटिंग विद इन दैट मीडियम आई हैव कंसिडर्ड अगेन एन एलिमेंट्री लेंथ ऑफ डी एक्स एंड ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड वॉट इज हैपनिंग वेन द शेयर वेव इज इंसिडेंट एट सेक्शन वन वन एंड वेन द शेयर वेव इज लीजिंग सेक्शन टू टू सो वॉट वी अंडरस्टैंड एज अ रिजल्ट ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर टॉर्क विच द मेटेरियल is subjected to because of the propagation of shear wave there will be angular displacement of any particular length so if you consider a particular length over here or any particular element or the line in which you are basically trying to understand whether there is some change in the angular deformation so if you consider this particular line which is basically parallel to the axis or perpendicular to your line of side you see when this will be subjected to some torque initially this was the position of the particle but once you start applying the torque as a result the position of the particle along the circumference of the rod changes so this is the the, the this is the initial position of the particle initial position of the particle and this is final position consider like this was the position when it entered one and final position is when the wave left section 2 so this is called as final position so this angular deformation it is indicated by theta we will use this particular value of theta whenever we will further progress with the derivation part now there because of application of torque and the stiffness which material is offering definitely there will be variation in the value of the torque at section 1 1 and at section 2 2 so at section 1 1 if it is i have considered as t x not at section 2 2 i am considering as incremental increase do by do x of t x not dx so this is consider two sections considering an elementary rod where which which where two sections are separated by dx at section 1 1 the torque which is coming into picture is t suffix x not at section 2 2 the section which is coming into picture is t x not plus do by do x t x not which is basically the rate at which along the dx at each unit length there is increase in the torque or change in the torque multiply by dx so then you will get how much between section 1 and 2 the net change in the torque value plus the initial torque which was actually available at section 1 1 that will give you how much is the value of torque 2 so this is the position of propagation medium and this is the direction of direction of s wave propagation so s wave propagation direction is also given and the direction in which the torque is applicable is also given to you now let's start so again we we know that once the wave leaves the material will come back to its original position so in order to ensure the equilibrium condition of this particular elementary length of the propagation medium that is dx for equilibrium so we will try to find out the condition which are actually applicable for length dx subjected to external torque because of propagation of shear wave through particular medium 
and then we will try to find out further based on the equilibrium equation. So, for equilibrium of length d x the difference in the torque the difference in the torque between sections 1 1 and 2 2 should be balanced should be balanced by the inertial torque should be balanced by the inertial torque. Now, inertial torque means resistance offered by the material offered by the propagation medium medium against shear wave against rotation because we are considering propagation of shear wave as subjected to particle or the cross section undergoing rotation. So, against rotation which indicates that if you are trying to find out the difference between the torque at section 1 1 and 2 2. So, that is the difference between difference in torque between section 1 1 and 2 2 will be. So, we can find out T x naught plus dou by dou x T x naught d x this is at section 2 2 minus T x naught this is at section 1 1. So, this is going to be the total torque or the difference of the torque between section 1 1 and 2 2. Again based on this equilibrium we will find out that in order to have this equilibrium there will be a Gavani equation which is given as mass moment of inertia into angular acceleration mass moment of inertia into angular acceleration will be equals to summation of external moment about the same point of about the same point in the direction of wave propagation so mass moment of inertia into angular acceleration angular acceleration means the particle is undergoing angular displacement so corresponding to that we can find out how much the angular displacement between section 1 1 and section 2 2 taking that into account and multiply by mass moment of inertia for equilibrium this should be equals to the summation of external moment which has been also taken about the axis through which the wave is propagating in the direction of wave propagation and about the axis. Here it should be highlighted that the mass moment of inertia the mass moment of inertia is a measurement of mass 
measurement of the distribution of the mass distribution of the mass of an object or the body or body related to a given axis. So, basically mass moment of inertia means how the mass is distributed throughout the body with respect to a given axis. For solid rods, we have considered here elementary rod or the medium of propagation as solid rod cylindrical in nature. So, for solid rods, the mass moment of inertia the mass moment of inertia for solid rods is given as half m r square where r is the radius of the rod m is mass of the rod, mass of the rod means the rod which is of our concern. So, mass moment of inertia for our case that is the rod through which the wave is propagating this is the value of mass moment of inertia. Hence, in the previous equation we had defined this particular part this is considered as equation number 1 that is mass moment of inertia times angular acceleration. Hence, the left hand side hence the left hand side of equation 1 can be written as that is mass moment of inertia times angular acceleration. So, half times m r square and acceleration value or angular acceleration value equals to dou square u over dou t square dou square theta over dou t square because theta is the angular displacement angular displacement I have already shown the value of theta in the previous slide angular displacement between section 1 1 and 2 2 So, again here this is the mass mass will be equals to rho times volume considering this is a cylindrical rod. So, you will have a value of rho into pi r square that is cross sectional area into the length d x. So, this is we can put over here also this value will be equals to 1 by 2 m is rho pi r square d x into r square which is over here and then dou square theta over dou t square which is basically the angular displacement angular acceleration. So, this you can write it as pi by 2 r 4 rho d x and then dou square theta over dou t square where r is the radius of the rod consider d as the diameter of the rod of the rod or the elementary rod which has been taken into consideration that is d equals to 2 times r. So, you can write this equation as again pi by 32 d 4 rho d x 
डो स्क्वायर थीटा ओवर डो टी स्क्वायर ना पाई बाय थर्टी फोर डी फोर इज द पोलर मोमेंट ऑफ एनर्शिया पोलर मोमेंट ऑफ एनर्शिया ऑफ सॉलिड रॉड इंडिकेटेड बाय इंडिकेटेड बाय जे सो आई एम कंसिडरिंग पाई डी फोर ओवर थर्टी टू एस द वैल्यू ऑफ पोलर मोमेंट ऑफ एनर्शिया विच इज इंडिकेटेड बाय जे सो आई एम गोइंग टू रिप्लेस दिस एज बाय जे देन यू गेट जे रो डी एक्स डो स्क्वायर थीटा ओवर डो टी स्क्वायर लेट दिस बी इक्वेशन नंबर टू सो इक्वेशन नंबर वन इज द बेसिक वन इक्वेशन विच इज कंट्रोलिंग द इक्वेशन इक्विबीरियम इक्वेशन ऑफ द रॉड थ्रू विच द शेयर वेव इज पासिंग एज ए रिजल्ट द रॉड इज सब्जेक्टिव टू टॉर्क इक्वेशन टू इज गिविंग यू द प्रोडक्ट ऑफ लेफ्ट हैंड साइड ऑफ इक्वेशन वन दैट इज मास मोमेंट ऑफ एनर्शिया टाइम्स द एंगुलर डिस्प्ले एक्सलरेशन दैट इज जे टाइम्स रो डी एक्स डो स्क्वायर थीटा ओवर डो टी स्क्वायर द एक्सटर्नल मोमेंट एक्सटर्नल मोमेंट विच इज बेसिकली गिवेन इन राइट हैंड साइड ऑफ इक्वेशन वन अलॉन्ग द एक्सिस एक्सिस ऑफ सिलेंड्रिकल रॉड वी आर रेफरिंग हेयर इज एस्टिमेटेड एज the difference in the torque which we have already estimated before writing equation number 1 uh, so difference in torque between 11 one, one and 22 two, which is already calculated as do by do x T x not d x. Let call this particular equation as equation number three. So equate as per equation number one, the mass moment of inertia times angular acceleration will be equals to the external moment about the axis, which is given by equation number three. So equate equation number two and equation number three will give. do by do x t x not d x equals j rho d x do square theta over do t square this is equation number 4 now if you we remember the torsional equation from torsional equation we can calculate t over j equals to g theta over l which is the length this is the angular displacement torque and then this is polar moment of inertia this is a general equation and further you have some more term which is not useful here so i am not writing the fur further term so t over j which are given over here are basically so, so i am removing the other part of the equation t over j for elementary rod rod of length dx dx subjected to angular displacement displacement dx d theta let me come correct this part so this will be equals to d theta in the length 
d x. So, you can write accordingly this particular for, for elementary length the value of t over j can be written as g times dou theta over dou x each increment not in the entire length of d x this will be equals to dou theta over dou x. So, now you get the value of uh, t over j or as per our equation we have used t equals to t x naught that is the um, uh, symbol we have used. So, we can write it as t x naught over j equals to g dou theta over dou x and we have to have an equation which is given in terms of dou by dou x because if you remember equation 4 we require a value of dou over dou x of t x naught. So, from here we can get dou over dou x of t x naught will be equals to g j dou a square theta over dou x square. So, this equation which is given over here will be similar to what is required in equation number 4. So, now we can compare equation number 4 with respect to this particular equation. I am writing this equation as equation number 5. So, comparing equation 4 and 5 comparing equation 4 and 5 we get what we get from equation 4 and 5 is g j dou a square theta over dou x square equals to j rho d x dou a square theta over dou t square. So, d x will also not be there because this is there on both the sides. So, d x can be removed from this particular equation. So, again this equation can be further refined as dou square theta over dou t square equals g over rho dou square theta over dou x square. So, again here we can see very much similar to primary wave when shear wave is passing through a particular medium there is change in the displacement of the particle with respect to space with respect to time which is correlated with respect to the stiffness and mass density of the medium as given by this particular equation. Remember in primary wave it was linear displacement in the direction of wave propagation. In this particular case it is shear wave which actually is inducing angular displacement indicated by d theta over a length of d x and incremental value we have used as uh, uh, dou theta over a length of dou x. So, again over here consider the value g over rho equals to v s square where V s is shear wave velocity, S wave velocity or the velocity with which the shear wave is shear velocity or S wave propagation velocity propagation velocity through the propagation medium through the propagation medium having g as shear modulus that is what we got from our torsional equation and rho as its mass density. So, medium which is having g as the shear modulus and rho as the mass density the ratio of g over rho will be equals to the square of shear wave velocity of particular medium or we can write it as V s equals to 
square root of g over rho. So, if you know the value of shear modulus and mass density of the medium, take the ratio of the two, take the square root and then you will get the value of shear velocity through a particular medium. So, again keeping this equation over here, you can get do a square theta over dou t square equals to v s square dou a square theta over dou x square. So, this is basically the equation which is call, I am calling it is equation number 7, equation 7 is known as one dimensional equation of motion equation of motion for shear wave propagating through a medium. Propagating through a medium. Now, one thing to be observed here is we are interested to find out the shear velocity of a medium, which is now defined as the ratio of g over rho and square root of that. So, as far as the medium is offering, definitely medium will be having some mass density, but any physical medium will be having some mass density, but whether the medium is having shear modulus or not, that will define whether shear wave can propagate through that particular medium or not. Example, if if any liquid, if liquid such as water, such as water do not offer, if water does not offer shear modulus, that means the value of water, uh, the value of g in water is 0, then definitely V s will be equals to 0 for water. That means, while the primary wave velocity, if you remember the numerical which was solved in last class, corresponding to water as the propagation medium, we had determined the primary wave velocity, but in case of shear wave, if it is passing through water, it will not be able to propagate, because the medium is not offering stiffness or shear modulus and then the shear velocity cannot propagate through water. So, g equals to 0 that means, shear wave cannot propagate through cannot propagate through through water. Same way if any other medium is there, any other liquid is there which is not offering any shear modulus, the shear wave will not be able to propagate through that particular medium. So, this is basically uh, lecture uh, uh, 15 focuses on the determination of how the shear velocity of a medium can be determined using the value of g and rho and how the variation in particle oscillation with respect to space and time can co be correlated with respect to the shear velocity, because it is the velocity with which the wave is propagating through the medium. Subsequently, later on we will also try to find out how this equation can further be used when we are interested to find out the response of the soil, which we call it is in uh, ground response analysis or local side effect. So, now let us solve one uh, uh, numerical over here. So, this is typically the value of shear velocity as well as the shear velocity required to be calculated, the value of g as well as the value of specific gravity is given. So, material I have used the same which I have used for primary wave velocity determination. So, let us solve this and we have to determine the shear wave velocity. So, first one is for steel, V s for steel will be equals to square root of g of steel over rho of steel. Again, be careful with the units. So, the value is given as 7093 into 10 raised to the power 10. 
seven point nine three into ten raised to the power ten over seven point eight two. That is the specific gravity of steel divided multiply by one thousand. That is specific gravity of uh, mass density of water. So this is going to give you the value of three one eight four meter per second, or approximately equals to three point two. Kilometer per second. This is the wave propagation velocity of shear wave through steel. So similar way, we can also determine for second one that is for water. Now for water, because g value equals to zero, so we can we need not solve it further. We can simply say because this value is equals to zero, v s value for water will be equals to zero. The third one is for rubber. So here the G value is given as 1.15 into 10 raised to the power 9 pascals, and then specific gravity is given as 1.28. So using these two values, we can determine the value of V S for rubber as Square root of 1.15 into 10 raised to the power 9 over 1.28 into 1000. So you can say rho of rubber equals to 1.28 into 1000 or 1280 kg per meter cube. So coming over to this equation, we can determine the value as 947.8. Meter per second, or equals to 0.95 kilometer per second. So this is the shear velocity or the propagation velocity of shear wave. First one is corresponding to steel. The second one corresponding to water because water does not offer resistance to shearing. That's why the shear modulus is zero. So the shear velocity. Of water is zero. Third one is the rubber. The value of shear modulus is given to us, as we can see in this particular uh, table. So, using this particular value of shear modulus and the value of mass density of the medium or the specific gravity which has been given over here, you can take the ratio of those two and then square root of this. It is going to give you the value of shear velocity. So, this is 0.95. Kilometer per second. The previous one was zero, and before that it was close to 3.2 kilometer per second. Now, based on uh, the derivation, what we have understood, based on collectively the derivation which we have done for primary wave as well as secondary wave, the primary wave can propagate through any medium, whether it is solid, liquid, or gas. However, whenever it comes to shear wave, because it is inducing shearing in the propagation medium. As far as the medium is offering resistance or has having shear modulus, the shear wave can propagate through it. Otherwise, the shear wave will not be able to propagate. Now we know that in Earth there are different layers. We discuss in our uh, earlier lectures also that Earth, you, if you start from the surface, you have crust, then you have mantle, and then you have core, and then further can be divided into continental crust, oceanic crust. Upper mantle, lower mantle, outer core, inner core, and depending upon the physical properties, some of these layers are in liquid state, some of these are in solid state. Secondly, if you take into account the mass density of the medium, which is roughly available across the depths, that is also changing. As a result, what we see whenever there is an earthquake. And wave has started propagating through different layers of the earth because of change in the medium characteristics. The wave will undergo refraction. There will be reflection as well. But in addition to that, because some waves can propagate through liquid, some waves cannot propagate through liquid. So even after reflection and refraction, once these wave reach to solid liquid interface, primarily the shear wave will not be able to propagate further. However, the primary wave will continue propagating further and getting detected at different locations. 
let us see this particular figure. So, here we are trying to highlight about the shadow zone. Shadow zone means though there is an earthquake, you can see over here there is an earthquake, focus of the earthquake is shown over here. Because of this earthquake, seismic wave started propagating, firstly primary wave, then secondary wave started propagating and as far as the medium remains same, the wave will continue without much change in the characteristics. If you take the medium is homogeneous and there is no uh, uh, unconformity or uh, heterogeneity present in the medium, the, the wave will continue and will be de getting detected at a recording station. So, there is a recording station. So, R s I am calling it as recording station over here, then you are having again R s, R s, but this is the position of recording station you see, because each of these recording stations are having sensors depending upon. So, once the wave reaches to the recording station, so the sensor are able to sense the vibration and we will get the ground vibration during that particular earthquake. Now, we also see that as you go deeper and deeper, there will be some molten state, there will be some solid state. As a result of which, whether you talk about primary wave which is indicated by red line, you see over here the primary wave is propagating in deeper layers and then further after undergoing refraction, there will be slight change in the wave propagation path or the the incident wave and the wave which is leaving a particular layer, it is actually moving towards normal and away from normal, because there is significant change in the medium characteristics between these two interfaces, these two interfaces. So, as a result of this, the wave will not continue like this and getting detected at the recording station, rather there will be some deflection from its continuous path as it started from the focus at two places minimum, wherever there is significant change in the medium characteristics and then further it is getting detected at the recording station. So, if you see over here this particular zone which is highlighted over here, in this particular zone with respect to epicenter, there will be no P wave detected primarily because of the medium characteristic the wave has undergone deflections. This is related to P wave. So, you can say any recording station which is located with an azimuth of 103 degree to 143 degree with respect to the epicenter. These are not again absolute value, these are with respect to epicenter. So, with respect to epicenter this is 103 degree and the other one is 143 degree. So, all the recording stations which are located between 103 degree and 143 degree with respect to epicenter will not have any sign of primary wave. Now, coming over to shear wave, because we see there are some molten state, liquid state within the earth. So, when shear wave starts from the source or the focus of the earthquake and when these waves during their propagation path encounters a material which is liquid state, the wave will not be able to propagate further. So, you will see there will not be a signage of shear wave in this particular medium. So, all the shear wave which were actually propagating through solids or semi solid that will continue their path may undergo some refraction, reflection depending upon change in the medium characteristics over the distance, but once it encounters liquid the shear wave will completely arrest, it will not propagate further. As a result again anything which is located, any recording station which is located between 103 degree on either side of your focus. That means, this is 103 degree, 103 degree on this side and 103 degree on the other side with respect to the focus. So, if the focus changes from here to here, then with respect to this whatever 103 degree recording stations are located, this entire stretch will not have any no shear wave, no S wave. So, this particular zone which is given over here from 103 degree to 103 degree, this entire zone is called as 
S wave shadow zone. So, there is the shadow the, the shear wave is completely shadowed, there will not be any shear wave detected at a recording station which is located at 103 degree with respect to your uh, focus. Similarly, from 103 degree to 143 degree there will not be any primary wave. This is important because, because if there is a recording station and it is not detecting any uh, uh, primary or secondary wave that does not mean that there was no earthquake. It also does not mean that the recording station is not working. Simply it means that because of the relative position of the recording station with respect to the focus, the recording station are not in a position to detect any shear wave or primary wave. So, these are called as primary and shear wave shadow zones. So, with this I have come to the end of this particular lecture, which is mainly focused on uh, one dimensional equation of motion for shear wave. In next lecture, I will be discussing about how the equation which we have just derived, how the solution of this equation can be determined. Further, this solution of this equation we will be used in later lectures. So, thank you everyone and we will catch you in next lecture. Mm -hmm.